What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp rendering tutorial for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to add lights within InScape. Um, so I got a question last week as I was going through InScape's new features on how to create lights in InScape. Um, before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you kind of a start to finish SketchUp training to help you get started fast working with SketchUp. So I cover everything from an introduction to the basic tools all the way through more advanced techniques like modeling for layout and interior design. And then also I go through some of the details of photorealistic rendering as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to learn a little bit more about SketchUp, get some more in-depth training, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, the model that I'm using from the 3D warehouse is Villa Modern by SZ Kristoff. So um, if you want to download that and follow along, you definitely can. Um, and what I've done is I've navigated to kind of the upper level of this uh, modern house model. So it ought to work really good. We're going to kind of light this living room area with a few different types of things. And so to start off, I wanted to talk about the, the three different ways of adding artificial lights within InScape. And uh, this is generally going to be true across most rendering software. So there's two different light object types. And so the two light object types are point lights and spotlights. And then the last is creating an emitter material. And so let's go ahead and start off and add some uh, point light to our model. So within InScape, what you're gonna do is you're gonna navigate up to your toolbar and there's an option up here for InScape objects. And so when you click on this button for InScape objects, what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you add a couple different kinds of things into your model. So there's four different things in here you can add. You can add point lights and spotlights. You can add sound sources and you can add proxies. And we're gonna focus on the point light and spotlight options right now. And so to start off, let's go ahead and run InScape. So I'm gonna click the run button and that's gonna pop this up in this window and that's gonna give me kind of a view of this model. And so you can see how right now this is being lit by the exterior sun within this model. So we're getting reflections, we're getting light coming in through uh, the windows, all that different kind of stuff. So what we want to do is first of all, we're going to change our time of day. And if you remember to do that, you just hold the shift key and then click and drag your right mouse button. And so we're going to drag this until we get to nighttime within our model. And I'm going to do a little bit more of a dusk scene just so you have a little bit of this light kind of shining through. But you can see how now it's dark in our InScape model. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to add a point light within SketchUp. So I'm going to go back to SketchUp and I'm going to go ahead and click on this option for point light. And then what that's going to do is it's going to ask me for two different things. It's going to ask me for the center point. So in this case, let's say I had a center point right here. I just click and then it's going to ask for the actual um, location of the object. So you can set like a center point and then you can move this down inside your SketchUp model. And so you can see it kind of brings in this funky looking little placeholder basically is what this is. So this is basically a piece of placeholder geometry indicating to you that there's a point light within your model. And so what a point light is, is it's basically what it sounds like. It's a point um, that emanates light out in all different directions. And you'll notice that this also shows up in your outliner here as an actual piece of geometry. So now, if I was to bring my InScape window back, you can see what that did is that basically created a point right here that's lighting my model. So you can see how I already have interior lighting within my model based on that point light. And another thing to note if you do this is you can copy and paste this piece of geometry just like you can any other geometry. So like let's say I use the Move tool in Copy mode and I create five different points within this model. And then if I bring InScape back in, you can see how now I have five different points. My lighting is a lot wider in here. So you can use this to create as many point lights as you want within your model. And to organize those, what you can do if you wanna do that is you can group all of these using your outliner. So like, let's say for example, I could put these in a group and I could call this group point lights. And then a little bit later, we could create a group for spotlights as well. And so you can see how 
I have my five point lights in here. And another thing to note, and I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a split screen here so you can see this. So we'll see how well this works. But if you were to come in here and you were to reduce the size of all of these using the scale tool, you'll notice that the size of the light that's generated changes as well within Enscape itself. So you can adjust these based on that to kind of tune in your lighting. And the other thing I want to note about this is you can also edit these. So like if I was to come in here and select one of them, for example, and I went back inside my group, you can adjust the intensity of the lighting using this slider. And you'll know that since these are all components, they're all copies of the same object, when you adjust one of them, all of them adjust. So note that the size of these objects is adjusting whenever I move this slider. So and you can move these lights around if you want to. And so one thing I wanna note about working with lighting inside your models is you don't want to try to brighten everything up using the brightness of the lights themselves. Meaning you don't want, if you want this to be brighter, you don't want to take this and just drag this intensity up um, to some super high level. Because what you're going to do is you're not going to get accurate reflections anymore and you're going to start washing out your materials and making a whole bunch of changes that you really don't want to make. What you want to do instead is you want to get these kind of to the point where they would be accurate. So you want to figure out what, um, if you were to put an actual bulb in here, you would want to figure out what the actual candelas of that would be and get this as close to that as possible. And then if you want to adjust your brightness, the way that you would do that is you would use your Enscape settings. So I would click on the settings option and I would go over into my, I would stay in my general settings and I would adjust my exposure brightness. So that's what you would use. And this is generally true across all different rendering programs. You wanna get your lighting in here as accurately as possible because these actually do calculations based on the real lighting. And then to actually brighten things up, you just wanna adjust your exposure brightness. Um, just kind of a note as to how you'd want to do that. And so the other thing I want to note is, okay, this is great. I've got these point lights in here, but if I zoom in, you can see how there's no actual geometry associated with them within SketchUp. So it looks kind of weird. You've just got this like glowing point on your ceiling, but you don't have any actual geometry associated with it. So there's a few different ways that you could do this. So let's say for example, that I was to put a floor lamp over here. So let's go into the uh, 3D warehouse real quick. So I'm gonna to go to File, 3D Warehouse. And in this case, I'm just gonna do a search for floor lamp. And a little trick is if you check this box for manufacturer model, um, SketchUp has all of its models in here as manufacturer models. And I try to use SketchUp's models as much as possible. Um, for a few different reasons, but generally speaking, they have smart modeling practices and that sort of thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring in a lamp. And in this case, we'll just bring in this uh, halogen floor lamp. So I'm just gonna click on this and I'm gonna bring this into my model. So I'm just gonna click download and then I'm gonna place it. And so one cool thing about Enscape, by the way, is you can see how this automatically added that light in there as soon as I added it to my model. So um, new geometry gets updated dynamically in here. But what I could do in this case is I could just come into the top of this lamp and I could add a point light. So I could just come right here and I could just add a point light within this lamp itself. And you can see how I'm, I'm having a little bit of an issue here because this is kind of showing through on the bottom. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this up a little bit and probably over a little bit. And then I may also adjust the scale. And sorry, this split screen thing is a little bit difficult, but I'm trying to make it so you can see what I'm doing and what I'm adjusting. But what we'll do is we'll adjust this up just like this. So now if I zoom out, and so you can see how what I have now is I have this torch lamp over here generating this actual light. So, and the nice thing about Enscape is this is all real time. So you can come in here and let's say you don't like how bright it is, you, or you want it to be brighter, you can adjust your exposure brightness in here. You could also come in and you could adjust that point light. 
just so just by clicking on it you could bring the intensity down to something maybe a little bit more realistic and you can see how that's updating in real time and one other thing I want to note is if you want these to go away so if you don't want to show these for example um, within your actual InScape rendering you want to turn them off you can just right click on it and you can just hide them and then as soon as you hide them and then you go back into InScape you can see how there's no light coming from those anymore so if you want to turn a light off for whatever reason you can just hide the geometry within your model so the next kind of light I want to talk about is a spotlight so a point light is basically a point in space that generates light. Well, a spotlight is a light that has a direction. So if I was to come in here and go back to my InScape objects, I would click on spotlight. And then once I click on spotlight, I could come in here and I could do the same thing where I set a base point, then I set the actual point where the light is in space. But then my third click, you can see how I get this kind of cone in here. Well, the cone is indicating um, basically the cone where the light is going to be. So you can see how I can basically set a point and then set a direction. So if I wanted this to be more angled, I could set this like this, or I could just click on this point and it would just set this. And you'll notice that at the base of this, there's this little radius in SketchUp. That's indicating the radius um, of the light and where it's going to be cast. So if I was to go in and look at this within InScape itself right here, you can see how I'm basically setting a cone of light right here. So my point is right here and it's shining the light down. And you can adjust that by clicking and dragging the beam angle. So you can see how I can adjust how wide that spotlight is using this. And you can also use this to adjust your brightness the same way that you did before. But these come in here in kind of the same way that uh, the point lights do, in that they're actual SketchUp geometry that you can copy and paste. So like for example, if I was to use the Move tool and uh, just create a couple copies of this, so let's say I was to create four lights and then I was to go back into my rendering you can see how when this updates I now have four distinct circles of light that uh, these would have come from so and in this case you could do the same thing where you could kind of generate a piece of SketchUp geometry to be associated with this you could create kind of a circle and create kind of a can up here so let's say for example probably what I would want to do is I would want to group this so and in, so I would right click on this and I would click make group and then I'll go ahead and replace these other objects with that group and actually you'd probably want to make them components but this ought to work for right now so I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create three more copies and we'll call it two more copies and then you could take all of these and you could just kind of set them flush up against the ceiling to make them look more realistic. And one problem you might have is since these spotlights are pointing down, your material might not look right, but we'll take a look at it. Yeah, so you can see how right now these are in here, but you can't see them very well because there's no actual light coming from these points. And so we'd have to come in here and we'd have to adjust those materials so that they're actually lit up. And so that's gonna take me into my last kind of lights, which is emitter materials. And so what emitter materials are, are they're basically materials. So they're not objects, but they're actually materials in your model that emit light. So let's say, for example, we'll come back to these can lights in a second. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna group those and I'm gonna hide them. But let's say that we had a TV on this wall. So if I was to just draw a rectangle and then push this out. So if I was to look at what Enscape's generating right now, I have my one light in here. Remember, I hid my spotlights and I just have this kind of like lump on the wall right now. Well, what we would do if we wanted to create an emitter material is you could actually add a material in here. So let's say for example, that this was a television and I'm gonna fix my material real quick so this doesn't look quite as silly. There we go. So now that kind of fits on this face. So what we would do in this case is we would go into the InScape Material Editor and we would select the option for self-illumination. So um, like if I turn the self-illumination off and I look at this in InScape,
We'll take this back to the middle of the night. You can see how there's the only light that we're getting right now other than the exterior light is from our uh, torch lamp that we created over here. But if I was to come in here and I was to go into the materials editor, I was to select this material and I was to check the box for self illumination. What that's gonna do is that's gonna make this material emit light. So you can see how this material is basically creating light within your model. So you can use this to add materials that add light to your models. And one thing I would probably do in this case is I would probably bring the luminance down um, because you don't want it to be that bright. So, but you can see how this is still kind of emitting light as a material. So what you would do is you would just set this as an emitter. And I will note that in a static rendering program, this really slows down your rendering, especially if you apply this to something that has a lot of polygons in it. I haven't tested it a whole lot with high polygons in Inkscape, but it doesn't seem to affect performance in the same way that it would with a static rendering program. And so what we would do is let's go back and let's so let's go back in here and let's adjust the material in our can light a little bit. So let's say for example that I was to come into this can light because you remember there's no light coming from this material. I could apply a white material like this color M00. And I should have made these components but I didn't so I'll just apply these one by one. So I'm basically applying this white material to all of these. And then I'll go back to the split screen for a second. So you can see my point lights are back in here. Well, I'm gonna check the box for self-illumination. So when you check the box for self-illumination um, and you have that white material selected, it makes that material an emitter. So now you have light being emitted from these as well as your spotlights pointing light straight down. So, and you probably need to bring this brightness down a little bit but you can see how you can generate the effect of an actual light in here using an emitter material and also your spotlights. So that's where I'm gonna wrap up this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, was this interesting to you? Or are you doing something different with interior lighting? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.